In order to uh, understand the efficient markets hypothesis, uh, we first need to understand what public and private information is. Because the efficient market hypothesis is really about what type of information is being reflected in prices. Um, so the first type of information is public information. And I want you to think of this as having two distinct criteria. The first is that it's easy or cheap to acquire and that a lot of people have the information. Private information is also has two criteria and it's the flip of that. It is hard or costly to acquire and very few people have that information. Um, you might be the only person that has that information, but uh, these two criteria of how difficult it is to acquire the information and how many people have it is what uh, separates private information from public information. Now, in reality, um, things are not entirely clear whether it's public information or private information. It's more of a continuum um, in that there's varying degrees of difficulty in acquiring information. Um, and the exact number of people who have it, um, it it's a little bit unknown. But uh, those are the two criteria that I want you to think about. So to get a little bit more specific, um, I want to, to draw a diagram of about these types of information. So if we want to think about information, we have to think about this concept of an information set. So an info set or an information set is all information possible about a company. And I'm talking about everything, whether we know it or we don't, it's just all out there. So information set is this umbrella term. And we're going to separate this into two categories that uh, we just laid out. We've got public information over here, and then we have private information. So public info and private info. And both of these feed into the information set. So you can think of these as two mutually exclusive categories that form the information set. So we should be able to, uh, in a simplistic sense, fit any piece of information into one of these buckets. Now, public information, I'm going to break into two different types. One type is a very special um, type of information because it's so easy to get. Um, everybody has it and it's, uh, it's trivial to find out. And that type of information is historical stock prices, which includes returns, so stock prices and returns, and volume. So this is just the standard stuff that you find in a chart on Yahoo Finance or on Bloomberg. Um, this is your historical stock prices, historical returns, I guess you could consider historical volatility, um, your volume, uh, just basic stuff. So this is another type of, or this is a subcategory of public information. And this historical stock prices, super easy to get. Okay, the other type of public information is going to be things like articles in the Wall Street Journal. Anybody can read the Wall Street Journal. It's relatively cheap for a subscription. Um, it's, it's easy and it's widely accessible. Uh, we have like financials of companies. So when a company files a 10K, anybody can go down to Edgar and read it, or you could go even easier and go to Yahoo Finance, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, doesn't matter. Easy to get. We have company press releases. Also easy to get. The company is literally trying to give you that information. Widely accessible and cheap to acquire. Um, other examples might be an analyst report. Um, those are easy to get, widely accessible, and cheap. Uh, maybe, I don't know, something you read or see on uh, TV like CNBC or one of those those talk shows uh, where people are yelling saying buy 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 or sell 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 um, What is common with all of these so the Wall Street Journal through the television is that it's cheap and easy to acquire 
Okay. Now, let's go over here to private information. So we've got private information. I'm going to break this into two categories also. The first one is insider information. And insider information um, is material, non-public information that is, is relative to, relevant to the stock price. Um, trading on insider information is illegal. Um, it is against securities law. Now, uh, material and non-public information, it's sort of a difficult uh, concept to, to grasp, especially for um, us non-lawyers. So the, the rule of thumb that uh, I give is if you know something for sure, then it's probably insider information. So if you're, um, let's, let's just say you're interested in uh, iPhone sales, um, you're, you think that's uh, important to Apple stock price. Well, if you have a buddy in the accounting department at Apple and he tells you how many, uh, I don't know, screens for iPhones that they bought that quarter, and you use that as a proxy for the number of iPhone sales, well, that's probably insider information because it's material, because it's gonna affect the stock price, and it's non-public. You got it because you knew your buddy. Or, you know, let's go even more extreme. Let's say you uh, uh, wiretap the executive cell phones. Well, not only would that be a legal period, but you've got information that is value relevant that is, um, that and you are confident in the quality of that information. So insider information is private information, but it's a kind that if you trade on, um, you are breaking the law. The other kind that is what we want is information that is difficult to get um, and or costly to acquire. And this is what's going to allow us to, to um, consistently earn excess returns. So we're going to be able to capitalize on private information in order to generate alpha. So what are some examples of private information? So uh, some hedge funds out there use satellite imagery to count cars in um, parking lots. So uh, if you're counting the number of cars in Home Depot's parking lot, um, Cars translates into customers, customers translates into sales, sales translates into earnings, earnings translates into value. So by having a better estimate of the number of cars in a parking lot over time, um, a hedge fund might be able to get a better estimate of the value of a company. Um, another source of private information would be maybe um, better statistical models. What's important here is that they are better than everybody else's. They are more accurate than everybody else's. And therefore, you have um, a better idea of what the future holds. So maybe your um, information about counting cars goes into your statistical model. Um, maybe in a subcategory of these better statistical models might be better financial models. Once again, you have to be better than everybody else. Uh, maybe another source uh, could be some in-depth patent analysis. So you are using your expertise in maybe uh, microprocessor design and you see that Intel has a new patent and um, all of a sudden you see a lot of opportunity here and you're using your expertise to, uh, to uh, acquire this private information. Um, maybe you go something a little bit uh, lower tech and say like track corporate jets with the idea being that if you know where the, the company jet is going and they keep going to some weird place um, that you don't know why, maybe they're talking to an executive at another company um, to maybe acquire that other company. But what's common for all of these sources of information is that they are difficult to get and costly to acquire. Um, and that is what makes it private information. Now, as soon as this information becomes easy to get, 
So let's just say um, uh, satellite imagery to count cars. Maybe that becomes super easy to acquire. Uh, maybe there's a free service out there. I don't know. Um, as soon as anybody can get it for cheap, that source of private information moves over here to public information. So once again, those two criteria are costly to acquire or difficult to acquire, and not very many people have it. The reason the information uh, type is important is because when we're talking about uh, the efficient market hypothesis, um, only certain types of, of information actually translate into alpha. Um, so with the weak form of the efficient markets hypothesis, we can use pretty much any information to potentially earn alpha. The only type of information that we're not able to earn alpha on is historical stock prices and volume. In the weak form of the efficient market hypothesis, we can't use historical stock prices and volume in order to earn alpha. The uh, semi-strong form of the efficient market hypothesis says that we cannot use any public information to earn alpha, but we can earn, earn alpha with private information. So private information allows us to generate alpha um, in a semi-strong efficient market hypothesis. Under strong form, under the strong form of the efficient market hypothesis, we are not able to earn alpha under on, with any sort of information. It doesn't matter how hard it to get it is. It doesn't matter how costly it is. It doesn't uh, matter how many people know it. Um, I, I think of the uh, strong form of the efficient markets hypothesis sort of as the magic version of finance in that why is the market efficient? Just because it is. Um, to, to give you an idea about reality, reality is somewhere between semi-strong form efficient and weak form efficient. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. So information is the basis of the efficient market hypothesis. There's two types, public and private, and we have these different categories.